What is up you guys, my name is Balkusa and welcome to a brand new video. This is going to be the 16th episode in the Iron Man series, the series where we do all sorts of PVM, PvP, we do all of our own crafting and gathering, all to work towards an 8.3 set without ever using the auction house or trading with other players. We've definitely spent a lot of time playing on this account and it's coming along very very nicely. We also have taken it upon ourselves to never use any other player owned crafting stations which has added a fantastic amount of challenge to the series. If you like that sound of a concept then I'm sure that you will enjoy this video and if you did let me know by leaving a like on the video of course because it does help and I will now start this episode off with the statistics starting the video off with a few different things. So we're going to be covering a lot of information here and I'm going to be trying to cut out a lot of different clips trying to make this video not 30 minutes long. Pretty much we are just going to be talking mostly about how much auto respec fame we have and also the learning points and things like that but basically I'm not going to talk much about this. If you want to read this go ahead and pause the video and I will compare these two pictures to each other at the end of this episode to show just how much fame we got and other stuff that happened. So to go ahead and pick up where the last episode left off, we went and caught ourselves a few tier 6 fish so that we can now start using them to clear dungeons with or whatever. This also has the added benefit that we can actually start to give um, our tier 5 fish to the butcher so that we can actually start to get extra chopped fish. So if we ever need fish for dungeons, we go to tier 6. If we ever need fish for nutrition, we do tier 5. So... Overall, this will give us a bit more nutrition, and we've already made good use of this uh, this new fishing rod. So I know I said it was a pretty tedious process, and that I wasn't very interested in it. However, I do see the usefulness in actually starting to grow higher tier animals. So this is going to be my attempt at getting that started. So we're going to be grabbing ourselves a few geese, a few goats, and a tier 4 horse. Just to kind of get the ball rolling, just to kind of get a few things here and there, even if it's in small quantities of course it'll still be helpful so this is going to be the start of actually farming higher tier animals which is going to be potentially and i can tell you because i'm doing this actually in post very very useful so we have a little bit of a red zone trip inventory here now i'm actually having to go back over in post mostly because my microphone stopped working halfway through the episode and it actually started working again towards the end so Nothing very fancy in this inventory, got a good number of silver bags as always, this was a mix between regular and corrupted dungeons, and so overall it went well. I also decided that I was going to change my setup and to take the Avalonian crossbow into a corrupted dungeon. Uh, long story short, I died with it. It wasn't really that interesting, I mean honestly, like, I, I don't really know how he killed me if I'm honest, because it was just one of those weird encounters where he never really hit me, he never really did damage to me, but you know, whatever, it happens. But other than that, we also did a very, very successful Roads of Avalon trip with a very massive inventory. And this inventory looks just absolutely gorgeous, cannot complain, even though it may look like there's all garbage here. Again, keep in mind, boys, since I'm an Iron Man, all of these items will be useful in one way or another, even if it's a scrap of silver or if it's a scrap for materials. Either way, these will be very useful to see. The roads have been treating me so well, in fact, that even doing red and black zone dungeons just doesn't feel nearly as worth it. So it's been very, very fun, and I'm definitely enjoying making use of the roads of Avalon. What is up, you guys? My name is Bokusa, and welcome back to Albion Online. Yeah, I know this is like a few minutes into the video, but I wanted to mention this mostly because I haven't played Albion in like three to four days, and I I'm going to be honest, I didn't really intend to not play for three days. I actually thought about playing every single day in between. I didn't forget about Albion, don't get me wrong, but the thing was, I was going to be playing on mobile so I could, you know, run back to town and I could start working with my farm animals because I started growing those days ago and they're most definitely done by now. But every single time I lay down in bed and I start to get on Albion so I can tend my animals and my farms, I have to install the new APK and I just refuse to do it because I think it's very, very obnoxious. And the one time that I finally did do it, it was between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m. for me, so the servers were down. So, yeah, we slacked a lot on the farming, however... Overall, um, we are back in it to win it, so we should be keeping up the progress with the farms. I'm gonna run through the chest. 
and see if I find anybody and or see if the mobs are there, but I'm going to go for the solo dungeon in the back. I don't really want to clear that chest right now. Damn, that's annoying. Damn, portal's down. I don't want to do that chest right now. Because that guy was there, and he's probably going to go back. He was dismounted. He probably only mounted because he saw me. So he might go back, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. Yep, he's here again. Nice! Yes. I knew coming back was a good idea. Hell yeah. Let's fucking go, dude. A 5.2 demon cape as well? That's dope. Alright, I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna go bank this. That's actually a decent amount of money in my inventory. It's an easy kill, too. He barely had a chance to fight back. He was on cooldowns. It's pretty dope. Tier 5 Armored Horse. That's awesome, actually. I'm totally going to use that. You think you can actually catch me? Are you stupid? Like, these people are dumb as hell. Why did he stop? There was no way he was ever going to get me. <laughs> oh, I love it. I don't know why these people dismount as if they have a chance of stopping me. It's kind of crazy, actually. Going to go ahead and buy the repairs. It's going to cost us most of the silver that we have, it looks like. But honestly... 100,000 silver is expensive, however, this cape on its own is 100k, and this horse makes me pretty happy to see, I'm not gonna lie. And other than that, yeah, pretty much uh, gonna go back out. Gotta keep doing the things, you know. Decided I'm not gonna do corrupted dungeons. Honestly, these dungeons aren't worth doing. Like, you can clear them kind of fast and everything, but like, even in the mid-tier, corrupteds just, I feel like, aren't that great. I'd rather just sit in the roads of Avalon instead. It just seems more profitable, so that's what we're gonna go do instead. Actually, wait, that's so good for me. I just thought about that. So I completely, I almost forgot. I almost didn't think about it. So right now my portal's actually bound to Martlock because I was going through the roads earlier. And I was planning on doing some tier seven Blackstone fame farming just because, you know, I wanted to, but my portal's actually in Martlock right now. And so I can't actually go. And this portal up here actually takes me to Samrif portal west or east or whatever. So yeah, it's west. Okay, so basically this will let me get my, um. It'll let me get to my Black Zone portal back to uh, Bridgewatch, which is really, really good. I was really going to just leave my portal in Marlock because I had no intentions of all running all the way. It just wasn't really something I felt like doing. I mean, I could have done it. It wouldn't have been that hard, but I just didn't want to do it. So this makes my life a lot easier, actually. I'm pretty happy about that, actually. It's dope. And I almost went into a new zone without, you know, stopping to do this. So it's going to be it's going to save me a lot of time. It means I'll probably do some fame farming. Just because I'll be near Black Zone, I'll do Tier 7s probably, because there's an easy to get to Tier 7 zone right out of this. Alrighty, after a rather successful trip, um, most of the money that we got did probably come from Tier 7s, but of course I spent a lot more time in the Tier 7 BZ, more so than the Tier 4 Avo Road that I was in. Honestly, boys, the Avalonian Roads are just, it's so much better. I get so much more, but we put a bunch of money in there, so now we're up to three, almost three mil, which is pretty good. And of course, we have 200,000 worth of bags here, some tomes, and just some other miscellaneous stuff. As far as the Avalonian energy goes, we're up to 41, which is pretty good. I'm very excited to get my first Avalonian tool, um, which I think, and I, I've been thinking about this for a bit now, I think I'm going to save... Let me go through this and look real quick. So let's say I need to get like a like a stone. Let's say I need to get stone, right? So theoretically, to get a stone, I would need 90 for tier 5, and I would need 160 for tier 6. That's a lot, but I mean, realistically, 90 is... It's more worth it for me just to get the tier 6, because not only does it give it a bonus, of course, to the gathering... Because having an Avalonian will give you a gathering bonus while using this tool, which is good. Increasing the tier tool 
gives you a little, the tool tier rather, gives you a little bit more of a bonus, but it also of course increases the speed at which you gather. So since I'm going to be using this stuff probably more so to gather tier fours for the sake of transmuting, it's more reasonable for me to use it on a higher tier tool rather than a lower tier tool. And of course, if I'm going to be gathering tier seven stone at some point, of course, I'm going to need to get a tier six hammer. Now, am I going to use a tier six Avalonian hammer? Probably not because of course it is going to be a little risky, not super risky, but getting the energy is rather annoying right now. So, so I ended up taking about four minutes of me talking out from this clip here. And most of that's because uh, one of the problems that I have, and I definitely admit that it's a fault, the more, the bigger that my bank value gets, and like the more stuff that I have in my bank, the more time I spend gawking at it. So I actually did it at the end of this episode, so there's really no reason for me to make you guys sit through five minutes of me talking to a bank tab that is going to be updated very shortly anyway. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say as far as the tools and stuff go. Very, very excited to keep stacking up this Avalonian energy, and we're going to make a ton of money on the way to doing so. So this clip's actually going to go by really quickly. Um, Basically, it was another Outlands trip. We didn't get a lot as far as actual stuff goes, but we did get a good quantity of silver bags and whatnot. Yeah, not too much more to it, but I'm really, really loving the Roads of Avalon. They're just so rewarding. Alrighty, so we went ahead and finished filling in our farm slots here. We have some goose eggs, which is great. We have some more kids to grow if we want some more goats for food. We have the milk. We also have a tier four foal if we want an extra. Absolutely beautiful. Now we're going to go ahead and run our farms. 44 eggs. I actually got a lot more eggs from them than I expected. So we're going to be using the eggs. I assume we could make tier five omelets. Let's let's double check that. I think it'd be very interesting. OK, so we need raw goose and goose eggs alongside cabbage. Well, we actually have cabbage just a little bit, barely any, but we have some. And we also have um, we have goose and we have uh, we have goose eggs. So yeah, that's actually we could totally make some tier five. Food. That's actually so creepy. Like I never thought I would really get to this point. It's just so weird to know that I could literally make my own like even mid tier foods is pretty dope. So Really exciting because like here we go, we have eight cabbages. It's not a lot, but I think it's enough to make us if we go back to the cabbage or the uh, rather the goat goose omelet. Only takes 12 and we got eight from that one. And so we get more from, we had another patch that we grew the other day. So yeah, that's pretty damn awesome actually. That's very, very exciting to see that we're really just pushing through on some of these. I'm going to be planting a lot of wheat, um, mostly because um, we actually use it to make flour so we can make bread later on. So that's something that we are going to be putting some time into. These goats, um, I could pick them up actually and butcher them if I wanted to. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to think about it. But we do have a tier four horse, which is exciting. So now we have another tier four horse that we can use for whatever. I wanted to get a tier five, but it was just too expensive. And besides, I think our saddler is only tier four right now anyway. So whatever. We're going to plant a couple of turnips, nothing fancy, and then the rest in carrots so that we can use them to feed our animals because, yeah, I'm not going to be spending all of my carrots to do this because I do still spend carrots on nutrition. So we're going to go ahead and pick up a few of our animals here. We're going to pick up these geese right here and this one here. We're going to pick up this goat. So we have two fully grown geese and three goats. Actually, I'll just leave two and two. That's probably fine. I'm going to go ahead and feed the ones that I have, which is going to take up most of the carrots that I have right now, which is fine. Since if I really need nutrition, I can just do a good long fishing session since I can catch tier six fish. It should be a problem. But yes, I'll be putting more stuff in there probably. I'm not sure what yet. Um, but now we could totally go get some goat meat and also some goose meat. So I'm actually going to run and do that. Um, it's pretty nice. I think I'll actually have to upgrade. I'm sure I'll have to upgrade my butcher because I'm pretty sure I never did. I never really had a reason to. I think it's going to be a cheap upgrade though. So let's see what level is it? It is actually level four, level three. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's double check because we're actually we're going to be processing up to tier five. So let's give this a look. 
takes 150 of each stone. So we need 150 tier 4 and tier 5 blocks. Let's see. Oh, we actually have it. Oh, that's actually kind of surprising. I'm not going to lie. I did not expect to have that many blocks on hand. Awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and upgrade that shit and do it right now. That's awesome, actually. I'm pretty hyped about that. We're going to go ahead and upgrade this. Pretty easy upgrades. Very, very nice. Super excited to see all the progress that we're making just in different things. The island progress is going well, which is always good. But yeah, here we go. We can get 20 um, cut goose, raw goose, which is pretty dope, and 40 raw goat, which is also good. And so now we have a lot of materials to process, and I can actually, I believe our cook is level 4. I think he takes 300 blocks, so I don't think I can do it right now, but I'm going to double check just in case. Yeah, he does take 300, which is fine. I could upgrade it to tier 5. I do have the tier 4 blocks to make the tier 5s I need, but I doubt that I have the tier 5 stone laying around. I have a little bit of tier 5 stone and no tier 4 stone, so no, I can't do it quite yet. But we could make other things in tier 4, of course. But I'm just going to hold on to the raw materials for now. Very excited to see all this farming progress. It's pretty dope. I have to admit, seeing all the different farming and all this stuff, like having a variety of stuff is actually kind of neat, even though it's not a lot of anything. It's just a bunch of random stuff, and you guys know me. I like a bunch of stuff, so very, very happy to see it. Yeah, I'm going to be making some pretty good use of some of this stuff, because I think you can actually use goose eggs to make certain potions, I believe. So, for example, a tier 5 potions, yeah. The tier 5 potions here, like the sticky and the gigantify, which I don't use that much. But yeah, even even the goose, like the tier 6 healing potions, which are actually pretty decent, they also require goose eggs and schnapps, which require potatoes. So, yeah, um, good to, good to see all this stuff kind of coming together and... Where I'm going to be using it, I'd have to get um, sheep's milk, which I haven't started yet, but that's fine. Might even consider planting some high tier herbs. I, I don't know yet. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, there's our farming progress for this episode, I believe. So I actually haven't done any legitimate long-term fame farming in quite some time. And it's definitely kind of sucks because I enjoy fame farming and faction farming. So... I have currently 35,000 points. I have my fishing rod to catch some tier 6 fish while I'm out there and about. And we're just going to go see uh, what we can get in a good trip in tier 6 red. It's not fantastic loot overall, but honestly, it's whatever. I just want to get some faction points. I haven't really just relaxed and fame farmed. and Of course, we need some footage for this video. So it would be good to just do some passive fame farm, just relax a bit and get ourselves some loot as, long, as well as some fame. And we're right now 1.67 million um, as far as respec fame goes. And we're not going to have it turned on because we are broke as hell. And so we're just going to see how much we end up with. And we can multiply that by something later that I'll probably mention to see how much fame we get and how long I'm doing this. Okay, just for the record, and I want to say it before I forget because I'm probably not going to mention it in a clip if I don't say it now. I literally have been running this dungeon for about an hour, right? These dungeons for about an hour. And I, for the first 45 minutes, or for the first 40 minutes probably, I shit you not, I saw a total of like five items over the span of like five to six dungeons. And in the last probably two or three dungeons alone, I have gotten all of the items that are pretty much in my inventory absolutely ridiculous because i got a lot of really decent stuff actually believe it or not so i have the 6.2 mage cow pretty dope got a tier 6 morgana cape which is very very expensive the rest of it just kind of adds up over time however most of these items i actually got at the end of my trip which is very funny and it was actually very demoralizing at first because i was like going through these dungeons thinking i wasn't going to get shit and so, pretty happy. 700,000 in the inventory right now. Overall, can't complain. It went pretty well. <clears throat> we got a decent amount of fame, even without auto-respec turned on. We got probably close to 100,000 auto-respec, which is pretty decent, which means we probably pulled... I would say close to four to 500,000 fame in that, like, a little under an hour. So, pretty decent. We got 144,000 silver in bags, and I did pick up 100,000 silver off the floor, most of which was picked up when I had the silver shrines, because, of course, they give you 5x, so... Oh, I have... Oh. Oh, shit, I'm flagged still. 
Thank you for reminding me. I'd completely forgotten, Martlock people. Okay, well. And in this little under an hour, we ended up pulling 20,000 faction points, which is good. And honestly, even if I didn't get a lot of loot, I shouldn't really have been worried. Um, mostly because, of course, the faction points on their own, just getting 20,000 of those, like, if they're worth roughly, like... It wouldn't be unrealistic to probably pull 15 silver each off of these. That's probably a little bit of a low ball, but I think that's probably good for like rounding issues. So that's probably like 300,000 silver right there, just tacked on to whatever I had already made, which my inventory says is 700K. It's not actually 700K, but I made 250 from the silver bags, or from the silver, the raw silver. I got 150 here. So that are two, it says it's about 200. I could probably sell it for 150 though. So that's putting us at roughly four plus this, which is 50. So I would say we probably pulled in that hour uh, roughly 800,000 silver after we process and everything like that. So yeah, pretty good. Nothing fancy other than that. Um, no really decent items, just it came out pretty good in the end. We got a bunch of relics, which is good. I, I definitely admit, and I've been really spoiled with the Roads of Avalon, so the loot there is just so much better, even if, like, I I don't clear nearly as many dungeons, I don't get nearly as much fame. It just, it feels more satisfying. It takes longer to get stuff, but you just get so much more whenever you do get it, and you get so much more fame whenever you kill high-tier stuff. Like, it's probably more fun in the roads, but honestly, for 20,000 faction points, I really can't complain. Anyway, guys, here is the final stats page for the end of the video. I know it actually doesn't look like I did that much, which is a little unfortunate. I will make an effort to try to get a little bit more. I mean, when you think about it this way, I suppose, if you look at these two pictures, like, beside each other, I got, like, almost 2 million fame, which is actually pretty decent as far as, like, a comparison as, like, um, a percentage, because, like, this is 16 episodes in, and so getting, like, a million and a half slash 2 million fame or whatever, and my total's only 21, that's pretty decent, so we made a good amount of progress. I want to try to do better, actually, in the next episode, so hopefully we will see that, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one next Friday. Have a good one, guys.